3D molecular imaging. And my name is Andrew Ori, and uh, I'll be available for any questions after the webinar. Uh, my email address is here, and my phone number is is here if you need to call. Uh, during the webinar, please use uh, the text messaging panel to ask any questions, and you can also uh, follow Molsoft on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn, and uh, you'll receive a, a video recording of this webinar uh, for your uh, via, we put that, usually put that on, on YouTube so you can view it there. So today's webinar is basically on graphics, so it's all in, included in the ICM browser which is a free download from our website. Uh, there's one thing that isn't included in the ICM browser which is movies which um, is, is in ICM browser pro, uh, but everyone who joins the webinar you can, you can get a 30 day uh, uh, license key for not ICM browser pro but for our main ICM pro desktop modeling software. Uh, which incorporates not only the graphics, but it also includes uh, things like mod molecular modeling, bioinformatics tools, uh, docking, lead optimization tools, and uh, cheminformatics as well. Uh, so that's available. Um, some some people have already sent their I sent some instructions in the email uh, that came with the webinar with the webinar registration. But um, if you have any questions about getting this license, please email me about that. Uh, so today in today's uh, webinar, we'll just uh, the topics we'll cover are um, searching the PDB in the ICM browser, um, how to display a protein structure in different representations and colors, how to display uh, ligand protein interactions and pocket surfaces uh, colored by uh, binding property, and then how to uh, generate different uh, graphics effects to try and communicate your, your structure better in, 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 a, in a figure. So there's things like shadows, uh, sketch accents, uh, different perspective uh, options of occlusion shading and fogging fog and lighting um, and then when you when you build a, a structure or a figure in ICM you can store it in a slide and I'll show those uh, slides that enables you to just store different ideas and, and always go back to them and there'll be the representation will be exactly as you, as you left them uh, these slides uh, and you can also save viewpoints so if you're viewing your structure from a particular particular point and you read in another structure and you want the, set the image to be exactly the same, you can save that viewpoint and go back to that as well. And then we'll, I'll show how to save the images in a variety of different uh, formats, and then also um, how to make uh, videos. So you can make videos from a collection of slides that you make, or you can just uh, record the, uh, the, what you're doing in the, in the graphical window. So when you open ICM, uh, you get access to a variety of different databases, uh, for example, the, the one we're going to use today is obviously the Protein Data Bank, where we can retrieve protein structures. Uh, there are other uh, protein structure options there, such as Pocketome, which is a collection of pockets of, from the PDB superimposed around the pocket, around the ligand, so you can easily see the flexibility of the pocket. Um, you can download the collection, you can use those for uh, drug design and what have you, but we're going to be using the PDB. Uh, and also, there's direct links to PubChem. You can search by substructure, uh, PubChem or, or Kemble, which is a is a very useful database of um, activity data as well as chemistry. So you can download data from there, as well as the Shaw Kemble, which is the patent database. And then you also have links to uh, sequence uh, databases where you can download st um, sequence alignments and sequences. But we'll be covering that in a separate webinar, I think, in a couple of weeks' uh, time. So mainly today we'll be concentrating on the PDB. So today's uh, structure we're going to look at, one, one of the structures we're going to look at today are, is, a, is a, a kinases. Uh, we're going to be looking at how, uh, making some images of this kinase, but it'd just be interesting to, 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 to just discuss what we're going to be looking at first. Uh, so we're going to be looking at a structure with um, so the kinases can be type 1 or type 2 and the positioning of this DFG either out or in sort of affects the size of the pocket. So if it's in, you have this red uh, pocket, smaller pocket in the ATP binding site. If the DFG is out, then you have a larger uh, pocket, uh, which um, if you target that uh, pocket, you can improve inhibitor specificity and, and slower off rates. And so the, the famous uh, Gleevec um, leukemia drug is, is one of those inhibitors, kinase inhibitors, which would bind to this uh, larger pocket. So let's go to ICM. If you have ICM loaded, you would see a, when you open it, you would see a, something similar to this. So 
you can search the PDB. So I said you, we have all these, all these different databases. So if you go to the search tab, uh, you can see that we have um, uh, links to Shaw Kemble, Kemble, and Protein Data Bank. PDB searches by default. So you can search the PDB by, for example, a string. So we can say kinase. We want to see all kinases in the PDB. So if you click Run Search, and you get, uh, for this example, kinase, we have over 4,920 structures that are annotated with the string uh, kinase. If you want to load one of those from this table, you can just double click and that will read in the structure and display it. Uh, you can also search the PDB. Uh, you can search with just a, a single PDB code, which we'll do in a bit. So you just type you know, 1 ATP, that's the, the PDB code here, uh, but we'll do that in a minute. Uh, you can also search the PDB by chemistry as well. So if you want to find uh, all these structures, uh, if you want to do a substructure search, you could sketch a molecule here and, and, and then search the PDB. Uh, just, just an example, uh, we, we have inbuilt into this, into this editor a, a, a drug dictionary. So you can type Gleevec and it sketches that molecule. You see on the right hand side that uh, we have a property monitor here. Uh, for different uh, chemical properties for this structure, but um, it's not really part of this webinar, so we'll skip that. Uh, so we, if we search here, if we close, go okay, yes, and you can see that it has this smile string, which represents that molecule. And then we can search the PDB for all structures in the PDB which have Gleevec bound. And you get another table similar to before. We have there are 18 structures with Gleevec bound. And so you can just double click on here and toggle through and jump to structure with um, leave it bound for each of those. So you can search by chemistry and also search string, uh, strings as well. Okay, that's just deleting these uh, just an example. So the uh, the structure we're interested in is 1IEP which has Gleevec bound. So how do we manipulate this structure? How do we move it around the screen? So to do that, uh, we have these tools. So on the right-hand side, there's, uh, there's these, these buttons here. The rotation mode is by default, and this will be used. Uh, this enables you to use your left mouse button to rotate the structure anywhere in the screen. Uh, you can you can jump to each of these buttons and press them if you want to translate or zoom. Um, but in the in the graphics display on the outside, there's some uh, sort of hot zones, so uh, so you don't have to keep going between buttons. So if you just leave it in rotation mode, then you can just use the left uh, left hand panel part of this, the graphics to zoom in and out. Uh, you can use the top five percent of the screen to, to do Z rotation, and these are clipping planes. So you can you can clip the graphics from the back or the front uh, using these here. So this 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 means you don't have to go back and forward between buttons. And also you can zoom in and out using the, the middle mouse, or you can click and hold the middle mouse button to translate, or you can use the middle mouse button to zoom in and out. And the right hand button on your mouse can be used to make uh, selections if needed. And this is selections. So it's important to be able to make selections in order to change the representation of a molecule. So all selection buttons are colored green. So, uh, it's these tools on the right hand side here. Uh, this is a, a, a rectangular selection. You can click here and then use your left mouse and, and, and drag over a region. This is a lasso or you can select atoms or residues. Or more conveniently sometimes is to just use your right mouse button and click and drag over a region that you're interested in. These buttons here, they alter your selection. So if, for example, you selected some backbone atoms and you wanted to propagate that selection to all atoms in the residue, um, you can click here, for example, R. Or you can use some buttons here to select uh, alpha helix or any, there's, there's a variety of different uh, filters that you can use. You can also expand in the ICM workspace here to select individual residues um, using just the left mouse. You can drag over the region that you want to uh, select and that's propagated to the selection. So 
If something is selected in the ICM workspace, it's highlighted in blue, and the selection is propagated to, to green crosses. So once you've made your selection, then you can go to the display tab, and you will be able to um, click on the button. So these buttons respond to any selection that you've made. So if you want to display everything in ribbon, you need to select the whole molecule and display ribbon. Uh, if you want to make a label, you need these. The colouring will respond to any selection that you've made. Okay, so uh, let's do that in ICM. Uh, so now we, we have this, this structure, one IEP. And we can see that we have uh, two chains. Uh, the, a, uh, the B chain, which is coloured yellow. You see this colouring matches here. I cut the matches here. And the, um, this blue one is the A chain here. Yeah. So to get this structure, all I did was go to PDB search and type 1IEP, which is the PDB code. Uh, I should have said at the beginning that if you want to ask questions, uh, feel free to, to ask them uh, by typing, or you can raise your hand and I'll, I'll get back to you at the end. But I'll try to respond as quick. If, if the, uh, I'll try to respond during the webinar. So we have two chains. We're only interested in the A chain, so I'm going to undisplay all molecules in the B chain. See, all molecules in the B chain have the B, uh, B before them. So B is the main protein, and these are the ligands. So have this structure displayed. It'd be nice to place it in the middle and orientate it correctly, right? So you can do that by we have select the whole molecule. So you could use the right click and drag, or you can uh, just double click here, and that will select. So now anything I do will respond to this selection. So we have a center button on the top here, and that will center the molecule. Now I can rotate the molecule to an orientation that I prefer. I use middle mouse to translate the structure across the screen. And I'm going to just change the representation a little bit. So as I mentioned, you go to the display tab, which is shown here, right-hand side. And you can see that some of these buttons are, are shaded blue. That means in your current structure, you have we have some residues in wire and some in this uh, thicker, what we call X stick. You can just toggle that off and we'll undisplay. And then we have the other rest of the molecule in ribbon. We can see the ribbon clearly here. So it'd be nice to color this ribbon, right? So we can color the ribbon by a variety of properties. If you click and hold on the ribbon button, uh, you can say color by, and then there's some options here. So we could say color by N terminal to C terminal. That gives that color. Okay, so this is the, the N terminal, the, the kinase at the top. We have this hinge region here and the ATP binding pocket, and then the C terminal. So we can make a slide out of this. So um, if we click on the bottom here, we have a slide button. And this, this brings another thing in the ICM workspace here. So it says slide. These slides are useful, so it means if you, you can do anything you want, you can change the colouring or zoom out or whatever. But the good thing is it always remembers exactly the representation that you had shown here. So um, at the moment I'm using this standard rotation button, um, but you can click and hold on the, the rotation and you can customise the rotation if you want to rotate. So you click and hold here and this brings up this button. So you can rotate by 90 degrees around the y-axis or whatever you want to try and do the z-axis, x-axis and apply. That will make the rotations. So the translation button, which I mentioned, the zoom button, but also you can see my cursor is, a, is an arrow here. But as I move it towards the left-hand side of the, the graphics, it turns into a the zoom. So I can use it to zoom in and out. Okay, so this is our first slide. So we, we talked about the, the DFG uh, mo motif. So it'd be nice to flag that region, uh, maybe show it, show it that it's in an out form uh, confirmation. So we can find the DFG region in a number of different ways. I know it's here. I could, I could just right click and drag in that region. But um, if you expand the sequence level on the ICM workspace in the protein, uh, you can find it. You can search for the motif. Um, or you can just click and drag over that region. So I can see the DFG is here, 381, 
382 and 383, residues 383. So I dragged, I've made a selection in this region. You can see that now it's just highlighted blue here. We also have green crosses in the graphical display. So, so now if I go to display tab, anything I do here will respond to that. So if I put CPK, it display those three residues in CPK or wire. So for, for this example, I'm just going to show it in X stick, the thicker stick. And for my image that I want to make for publication, I'm going to zoom into this region. So to do that, I made a selection. Because I made the selection, the zoom button will respond to that and we'll go straight into the DFG region. So it'd be nice to color this region, I guess. We can color it red, for example. And so the color panel responds to to that, to your selection. So it's only coloring the, uh, the DFG region red. Uh, it might be nice to color the other residues that aren't in the DFG motif a different color. A uh, convenient way to do that, as I mentioned, is that these, these tools here enable you to uh, alter your selection. So one of the tools is this uh, exclamation mark, which means invert. So this will basically, if we click on this invert, it will invert the selection, which means it will do it will select everything else other than the DFG. We'll do that. So now you can see in the sequence, everything except the DFG is selected, which means if we go to the color panel, you can color everything outside of the DFG white. So we can make another slide of that. So now we have two slides, so we can just toggle between the two representations like that. Okay. So it might also be a good idea to label this DFG region. Uh, we can do that by once again selecting that region. So select DFG, we have the selection, and go to display tab, and we can add a, a label, residue label. So this is residue label, this is atom label, and uh, variable label. So you add the label. So now we have three residues labeled. If we want to change the coloring of the label, we can click and hold on, similar to the ribbon one where we change the coloring, click and hold and you get some options. So you can say, I uh, want the label to be... Um, by default, it's the same color as what you've, you've colored it, uh, but that's so magenta. And then you can move the, the labels. There's some built-in options, like shift to side chain tips, for example, but it's not necessarily convenient sometimes. So sometimes you may want to drag the label to a position that is, is clearer. So you can click and hold and choose the option, drag labels, which means that then you can use the middle mouse button to, to drag those labels around. So you click and hold on the middle mouse and drag it to the position that you like. So maybe this is a better slide. So you can make another slide or you can overwrite the slide. You can click and hold here and say overwrite uh, current slide. But I now have uh, three slides. You save slides. I just had a question about saving slides. Uh, to save a slide, you just click on this um, camera button here in the bottom. Hopefully you can see that one. Okay. In the so so now we have the three three residues um, coloured and and uh, displayed. Now let's move on to the uh, residue onto the ligand. So with the ligand, we can just we can display. We can see it in the ICM workspace here, but to see it in the graphics, we would need to click on the box that has the ligand. Yeah, so you can see the ligand. So uh, sometimes it's it's nice to be able to color the the atom, the carbons of your ligand. If you have multiple li car uh, ligands superimposed, for example, you may want to give each one each carbon a different color. So we can color the carbons a uh, different color by Selecting the ligand, I, I selected the ligand by double clicking here, and then I click and hold on the uh, on the X stick button here, and you can say color carbons. It's color C only here, and um, you can choose green for example. Okay. 
So that's you have to make a selection first, and then you click and hold on the button, and you choose color carbon. So you can also change um, other things related to that that ligand. So you can say, um, I want the thickness to be. You can change the thickness, the ratio, the ball to stick. That's like one, um, and other other things. So we can make another slide of this if we wanted to. So now we have four slides. Toggle through them. Okay. Uh, so some I've had quite a few questions. Some of them I'll get back to definitely at the end. Um, so uh, we can cover those later on. Um, and some of them may be answered as we go through the webinar as well. Uh, so we can also um, be interested to find out which residues are, are making contact with Gleevec, right? So we can also, a quick way to do that is to um, right click on the ligand and choose uh, pocket. So you can use right click here or you can use this drop down button here which will open that menu. You go to pocket and ligand pocket interactions. And that shows you uh, the, um, the key residues that are making interactions with the, the protein. Um, we do have other tools that can re report the contact area and things like that. That will be in the third webinar, I think, of this series in the protein structure analysis. Um, but you can see you can see hydrogen bond here with the hinge region. Uh, you can see one here with this uh, backbone atom, and uh, you can see the salt bridge here between this lysine and this acid here on the alpha C. So we can make a another uh, image of this if you wanted to. Another slide. If you want, that was a quick way of, of, of finding neighbors, but you can also right click and choose neighbors here, and that will, uh, you can, it will give you a radius, and you can be more, more. Uh, you, you can use, define it yourself. You can say I want six angstroms. If you had multiple structures superimposed, you can also uh, change that here as well. So uh, this is one example. If you want to change the, the background color uh, of your, of your uh, image, you can right click on the color panel and that will change the background color. Just right click. So this example, I'm going to use white. Okay. okay. So we have slides. Uh, we want to make, maybe we want to compare the DFG out structure, which we have, with the DFG in. So we can read in another PDB to do that. Um, so to do that, we go to the search tab, and we would, and the PDB code is, um, let me remember, 1OPK. So just go to PDB search, type in 1OPK. So this is the same ABLE1 uh, uh, kinase, uh, but it's in the in a different conformation. So we have two structures. We have our original blue A chain of, of, with the Gleevec bound. We also have this new one, um, one OPK. So to be able to compare the, the pockets, we need to be able to superimpose these two structures. To superimpose them, we uh, you need to make two selections of the things you want to superimpose, basically. So we want to superimpose the A chain of this new structure that we've read in. You see it's one OPK, so we can select that. You see green crosses here. And we want to superimpose it onto the A chain of one IEP with, with the DFG out. So we double click, hold control, and double click. So if you hold control, that enables you to do a non-contiguous selection. So that enables you to select different things. So we have two things selected. Then to superimpose, we can just simply go to the display tab, and there's a superimpose button here with this arrow. You just click on that once, and it asks you which object you want to stay in place. I want one IEP to stay in place, and so I go OK. So now um, we have the two uh, structures superimposed, and um, I can just zoom into the 
can you display Gleevec? So I just want to, just for clarity, I'm going to just display Gleevec and this uh, this ligand which is in the ATP site and the other structure. And um, we can zoom in there if we wanted to. Uh, but we can see that in the in the new structure we read in the the DFG region is here it's closing the ATP binding pocket and in the original structure the DFG comes out shown here so we could um, make an image of this if you wanted to but as, uh, we've got enough slides uh, displayed uh, so if we want to we, we, we've, we've, we've spent a long time building these images we may want to save everything so we can save this and go file save project so this will if you do save project it will remember all your all your slides and everything else in ICM okay so I'm going to go back to my original slide first slide here so to make uh, to make images we click on uh, you know PNGs and JPEGs uh, we, we need to click on the button next to the slide button, which is this one. So inside that button, there's um, options to copy the image to clipboard. Um, right image, right image advanced, I'll show you in a minute. You can also add your current structure to, to an album or set it as a, as a background. That would save those in, inside ICM. So you need to click and hold. Or a single click just copies it to your clipboard, and then you can paste it into PowerPoint or whatever. Uh, you, you need to use. Uh, you'd also notice, I'll show you, that for high quality images you, 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 you need to have, when you, when you copy to clipboard or write an image it automatically does this, but um, sometimes on the display you need to you choose high quality and anti-alias button as well. And then the, the videos I'm going to show in one minute, um, you can make a, a video show from your slides. You see that here we have four slides you just right click and you export that as a movie then make a movie or you can click on this camera button and it'll just record whatever you're doing in the graphics your rotations your zooming in and everything like that so it's gonna go here so to make the image we click and hold on here we can say copy image to clipboard or we can say write image that will just automatically write it you can see in the terminal window uh, that it's written it to my desktop and it's giving it just an ICM1 if I press it again it will make a new one um, as well and if you use the right image advanced you get additional options so you can change the uh, you can resize the image so at the moment it's set for this number of pixels and the scale uh, you can change the you can have a transparent background and then you can you can define where you want to save it in which directory you want to save that image. Okay, so for the slides, um, you can also uh, for the next webinar uh, next week, uh, we'll, I'll show you how to. We can uh, put these on the website and uh, also inside your PowerPoint, but um, in fully interactive molecules. Uh, but you can edit the slides to incorporate uh, some transitions. If you right-click on the slide, you can add uh, smooth transitions between the slides. Edit slide. You can give each one a name so you know exactly what is, uh, what is inside the slide. And um, the same, I'm just going to edit these here. And then we'll I'll show you the movies. Same with this one. This has some transitions and some tra blending. So when you go between uh, slides, it will it will show you those uh, transitions. Okay. So, um, and also I want to just, before I move on, I want to show you the viewpoints as well. So, remember we read in this. Maybe we like this viewpoint of this way that the Gleevec is bound. And we can save a viewpoint by clicking on this I button here. So we could call it um, the, the viewpoint um, uh, pocket view or something like that. OK, 
go. Okay. So now if we read in the other structure, or if we move anything, and maybe display the other one in, in DFG out, uh, DFG in, um, and change the uh, orientation, if we can even undisplay the original molecule, the original structure. Just display this. And we want to produce a, a figure with the same with this structure in exactly the same viewpoint. We just need to double click on this viewpoint and it will take us to exactly the same structure position. Uh, view, view, viewing position as the other one. So you can make multiple figures that way. Um, so a question about the, the, the file types that you can save. You can save in most uh, um, file types. If you click on write image, it's going to write in PNG, but if you write image advanced, um, then you can just change the, as you save it, you can say JPEG here and or um, any other most other formats are supported you just need to uh, change the the file uh, file ending of name uh, and it will save it in that in that kind of format and so for movies um, so the I find the most convenient way to make a movie is is, is using slideshow or you so to do that you um, right click on slideshow and you say export as movie and that will save your all your slides into a movie file. It takes a little bit of time, so I'm not going to run that. Or you can just click on this button, this camera button, and it's going. And then it will. You'll see a little recording thing here, and it just means anything you do um, will be dumped into a into a video. And then you can edit that video if you need to edit with other software. But um, sometimes the more convenient way is to make a series of slides, and it will transition between those slides. Uh, if you right click you can see that you can you can have timing between each frames and how many frames and, and, other, and other things as well and the format for, for movies I think it's, it's a MPEG or AVI format that supported okay so that's how to make images and, and movies so just some other additional um, things that are useful so we may you may want to um, look at the surfaces for example of um, a binding pocket of a ligand so we have two inbuilt uh, ways to do that one's called receptor surface uh, which is um, which means that the protein surface is colored by properties so green is hydrophobic red is hydrogen bond acceptor uh, blue is hydrogen bond donor we have another surface which is kind of the subtraction of this surface and the ligand it's called a ligand surface and it's colored by the properties um, of the ligand rather than of the receptor and we use it for for lead optimization so it's an easier way of looking at the pocket to find uh, cavities and other things so we'll, sh we'll show that now it's going to delete everything i've done here go edit delete all and I was going to read in um, a stre a streptavidin and biotin uh, structure, one STP. Okay. So we read in the structure, it says here XR, so it's an X-ray structure. It's, it doesn't have any hydrogens, there's no it's a resolution of 2.6 angstroms. So if we want to see the pocket for biotin, we can so we have you can see we have um, three molecules we have the a chain which is the protein we have the biotin molecule the yellow stick and we have waters which aren't displayed but you can toggle those on and off or you can you can select individual ones here um, but if we want to look at the pocket for biotin uh, we right click and we can say pocket and receptor pocket okay and we get this generically colored um, uh, uh, pocket it, it doesn't have any properties because at the moment our structure is just an x-ray structure it doesn't have any hydrogen so we don't know anything about or any uh, any idea about the the charges and things like that so to convert it to an isom to in order to to view the the pocket colored by uh, property we need to convert this x-ray structure into an into an icm object and that will add hydrogens it will optimize certain side chains and the charges will be correct. So 
we right click here to turn, turn it to an ICM object. We say convert PDB. So you can choose to delete the waters if you're not interested in the water molecules. Or you can choose to keep all tight waters, which means any water that's making three to four hydrogen bonds between the ligand and the receptor. And, and then if you're doing this properly, you would choose optimize hydrogen. So it takes a little bit of time optimizing the hydrogen bonding network in the protein. Um, optimize hydrogens, asparagines and glutamines, and histidine, sorry. Um, so sometimes with the orientation of these residues is not clear necessarily in the electron, uh, in the in the maps of the of the protein, uh, and so we'll cover that actually um, in the crystallography webinar. Uh, so we optimize the positioning of these asparagines and glutamines, and I'm just going to choose replace the original. You can also guess formal charges in the ligand, and also optimize tautomers, but we're not going to do that for this example. So now you can see that. The XR has been replaced in the ICM workspace by ICM, so it's an ICM object. So now it is a full, full model structure. It has all the hydrogens and everything like that. Um, and so we can display the pocket. Some of these hydrogens, have, we didn't optimize hydrogens, so they're not, some of them aren't in optimal positions. But um, if you now go to right click on the ligand and you choose pocket, and we say uh, receptor pocket, that would generate the, the surface colored by properties. Uh, you can change the representation of that. If you, you can see that it, it builds another odd thing here in the ICM workspace. So if you right click, you can change it to smooth, solid smooth, or smooth transparent, or wire representation. The other pocket I showed was the uh, ligand surface, which is kind of the, the opposite. Um, it sort of shows you where there's, it's an easier way of identifying uh, cavities in the pocket for, for designing new ligands, which uh, which we have for other tools like uh, lead optimization. Uh, so you can see here that it's completely, there's no space here to design, to, to build out into this region. Uh, but here there's, there, there's, there's a cavity there's space here. So it's a useful different way of representing the, the pocket. So for hydrogens, um, hydrogen bonding, sorry, um, we have it in the display tab, there's a hydrogen bonding button here next to the ribbon. If you single click, it'll display the hydrogen bonds. And all the hydrogen bonds that are, sh uh, that are there or shown, if you, you can expand it in the ICM workspace and uh, uh, you toggle which ones you want to display on and off. So these, the hydrogen bonds are shown as green uh, spheres. You can change the color of them. Uh, you can export all the hydrogen bond that's found to a table, which you can then accept, export into Excel, for example. Um, there's a different, there's a different uh, things. So you can uh, edit the font to the, you can edit the font of the label and, and change different, different things for, that, for the hydrogen bonding. Okay. So that's hydrogen bonding and structures. So we also have uh, in the meshes tab, you could, now it's hydrogen, now it's converted into an ICM object. Uh, you can also build full uh, electrostatic surfaces using the meshes tab here. And I'm clicking here. Just wanted to move on to some uh, different uh, ways of representing structures to, to enhance your, uh, your structure. So this example is uh, serine protease. It has a PDB code of uh, 2 uh, PTC. Uh, so it's, it has the, the protease and it has this peptide. There's a serine that initiates a nucleophilic attack on the um, on the peptide amide, and we're going to use this structure to look at some different uh, effects. So the first thing we can look at is this mole, mole skin, which um, enables you to uh, easily create surfaces and see contacts between the peptide and, and, the, and the surface. So uh, 
going to read in that structure, the protease. It's got the P. If I go back to ICM, go to SNI. Okay, so you can see that the uh, the protease is in blue, and the the, the ligand is this protein in yellow. So it'd be nice to easily quickly make surfaces and see the interaction between these two proteins. And that's the, the mole skin uh, option I showed just a minute ago in the slide. So to do that, um, you right click on the protein, you choose shapes, make, and then make molecular shapes and contacts. So this, is basic, this basically builds surfaces for everything that you have. So if you've got a very large protein, it might take a little time to run. But um, you can see the sky blue is this molecule E, the, pre the, the protease, and I is the, the ligand. And we can see now that we have two additional surfaces here. G, G stands for grab, grob, which is a graphical object. And so if we, you can toggle this on and off, basically, to display and undisplay the structure. So we can quite clearly see uh, here that this surface, the blue surface, is colored by uh, where there's interactions. The surface is colored, so um, we undisplay the ligand. You can see the serine, these color spots are where the interactions are made between the receptor and, and the ligand. Uh, so serine is the, the one involved in the uh, uh, nuclear attack, or nucleophilic attack of the peptide. So that's, what, so that's one way of displaying. Okay, because now we have surfaces, um, we can, you can also uh, clip, we can first, we can clip away surfaces um, using the clipping tools here. So if we click here and drag, this, this clips away the surface from the front, or you can clip at the rear. Uh, you can also um, lock the surface and, uh, and you can clip away but leave the protein underneath um, to unclip. So you're just, clipping the, you're just clipping the surface and not the protein. So that enables you to see a bit more. So if you click here and then if you use the, um, the, the, the front clipping plane here, you can drag and we can see that the um, the protein is not clipped, it's just clipping away the surface underneath. So, uh, so if you want to lock this um, clipping plane, you can click on the lock. That means uh, when you rotate or transition this molecule, you see that, that the way that's clipped has been locked at that position. And so you can see your molecule um, sticking out of that as clipped. Okay. This one, if you want to remove the clipping plane, you can click and hold here, reset to default. Okay. So, some other um, options. We have a fog effect that you can use. Uh, there is a transparency, which I'll show. Then uh, sketch accents, which adds this sort of uh, outline to your molecules. There's shadows, and um, occlusion shading. So occlusion shading um, enables you to, to sort of color the pockets a little bit more to, to be able to see the depth of the, of the pocket. So to do those things, I'll just show you uh, in ICM. That's gonna Uh, it's gonna, I'm going to read that same example again um, to SNI. Um, it's going to build those uh, shapes and contacts. Okay, it's going to remove the clipping plane. Okay, so for fog, um, The fog is controlled uh, using, by default it's usually set, so fog is here. You can see that I also have the anti-aliasing and high quality buttons chosen, which I 
which improves the uh, the representation. So, if you, for example, if I uncheck these, you can see that the the surfaces are quite rough around the edges. But if you choose those, then they become smoother. So, for fog, um, you can you can use the uh, the, the rear, for example, you can add fog to the rear, or you can change the representations. So this makes the ligand the stand out a bit more and puts the the protein uh, in a sort of fog. <laughs> uh, or you can change the front as well and, and play around with those fog. Um, so to, to go back to your default, uh, you just click here, and that'll bring back the the structure. So you can also change the lighting, which is sometimes useful. So you can change the shine here. Um, you can change the transparency of the, um, of the of the surface, and play around with other other tools. So um, so yeah, for transparency, you can you can make the if you right click on any surface which has G underscore, then you can play around and choose. Smooth transparent or smooth solid. Currently, it's smooth solid. If you choose smooth transparent, you should be able to see the structure underneath. If you go to display tab, the ribbon can be transparent. If you click and hold on the ribbon, choose transparent. Now that's now the the the, the ribbon is transparent. Uh, we have that option which I mentioned called um, sketch accents. So if you go to to view menu and choose sketch accents this adds uh, this uh, black coloring uh, uh, sort of accent around each of the, the molecules and shadows for shadows um, you go back to lighting, and there's a re reset default lighting option here. Uh, so for shadows, you can um, I'm just going to undo the transparency. Um, if we display this, so we have this surface, this G underscore surface for this molecule. Um, I don't want it to be clipped. I'm just trying to unclip it. So um, if we add the, there's this shadow button here, I think, this is it? Oh no, sorry, um, the shadow button is this one. Uh, so now if we display the, we can maybe project the shadow of the ligand onto the structure. So you can change, go to the light tab, and you can change the direction of the lighting from the X direction. Uh, Why, let's see. Okay, you can see a bit of shadow here. No, it's not the best example. Um, as we rotate, the, the shadow is projected onto the surface. Um, the shadow is quite heavy, so on the graphics, so you can you should really untoggle it usually when you want to go back to your regular uh, display. So, just wanted to finally end with um, that you can also uh, you can also display uh, stereo. Uh, the buttons for stereo are in this. The options for stereo are in this glasses button here. You can click and hold and change depending on what kind of hardware stereo you have. Uh, but if you want a sort of cheap option, uh, you can buy these glasses for like three dollars and use Anaglyph. Uh, stereo, which is pre pretty reasonable um, viewing uh, in stereo. Uh, I can show you the, those options here. If you have those glasses, I'll turn the anaglyph on. You can click and uh, click and hold here and choose anaglyph. So you can. So now, if you have the glasses on, it should be projected in in stereo. If not, it's just going to be a, a colourful mess. Um, so you can toggle that on and off here, and there's also options for other hard, start hardware uh, stereo options, depending on what glasses you have. You click and hold on that button there. 
Okay, so there are some questions uh, which I'll get to. I'm just going to end uh, just with this slide. So, um, so thank you very much for your for your interest in the webinar, and um, I will, this uh, a recording will be sent out to you uh, hopefully later today. Um, next webinar is how to embed uh, fully interactive 3D molecules into a web page or into your PowerPoint presentation. So uh, you can we about 10 years ago we patented a way of storing uh, multiple uh, things such as protein structure, chemical structure, images, sequences, text and 3D protein, uh, fully interactive proteins into one single file. And this one single file can be read into um, the ICM browser which you have or um, into PowerPoint or into a, a live uh, web page. So that's the next um, webinar next week and so I'd like to thank you very much for your time please feel free to email me I have some questions which I will cover now right um, try to get to those sorry <laughs> uh, if you want to some people have written questions which is great if you want to ask a question you can raise your hand and let me know and I can open your your mic and you can speak to me uh, and respect. so we had one question about saving these structures as a PDB file. Um, you can save, so we've read in this, this crystal structure, we can save it as a PDB file by right clicking and choosing save as. And then uh, you get this uh, drop down list and you can choose PDB here and that will write it out as a PDB file. If you do file save project, that's going to save it in ICM format, ICB format, and that can be read in the ICM browser or on our um, on the iPad or um, on um, an Android device using our app called iMoleView. Um, so I just go through the question. Oh, I had a question about um, representation of um, DNA and DNA molecules. Uh, I have an ex I can just find one. Um, yeah, fire. This is I think this is RNA. It's the same thing. Yeah, so um, <laughs> the representations you can change. So uh, you can see if you read an, R an RNA molecule, it's an RNA or DNA molecule. You have uh, this default representation of the uh, bases like this. If you want to change those, uh, you can go to File Preferences and then search. DNA here, and then you can change the, uh, the, the representations. So uh, some people prefer this kind of representation of the bases. Others prefer tube and X-stick, which I think is default, this one. Or you can choose um, ball, that representation. So that's in the preferences. Okay, that's for DNA and RNA. Um, some of these uh, we've already covered. Um, so to color by yeah, we'll cover things like B factors um, later, but uh, in the crystallography webinar. But um, I'll just show you now. There's a question about how to color a structure by B factors. So if you display the structure, you can click and hold on the ribbon, for example, and choose and color by, and then B factor should be here, listed here. So this the glycine rich list kinase has, has a higher B factor. You should be able to display the, um, the coloring. So uh, zero, B factor zero is blue, green is like 30 or 40. Okay, um, so you can also color other things here. Anything that has this drop down, you can color by um, hydrophobicity, uh, other, other things like that, polarity. Um, you can also change the, the representations as well using the drop down button.
Uh, you had a question. Um, it's everything. Everything I showed, apart from the videos, are in the free ICM browser. Um, the videos in a product called ICM Browser Pro, um, but you can get a a 30-day license of ICM Pro, which is this one I'm using, which has the chemistry options, docking, and or lots of other tools, <laughs> and so it basically has everything. We, we um, you can get that um, just by sending me the host ID of your machine. I I, I can send instructions later. Um, I had a question about uh, whether somebody I think who uses uh, ICM for other uh, stuff, um, and he's in, for example in the Ligon editor we have this thing called Pretty View. Um, there are some inbuilt things similar to what we call pretty view. Um, they are located in this hydrogen button here. If you say elegant ribbon display sketch, that will that's a quick way of um, generating this this default view. You can change it if you edit the macro that it calls. You can put it in whatever option you want. I'm not sure what that will do. <laughs> uh, that's that one, but um, you can add. The graphics, yeah, the graphic user interface is actually fully customizable, so you can add your own menus if you wanted to, if the things that you prefer. Um, okay. Okay, so I had a question, how do you display, display multiple um, uh, PDBs side by side, uh, like five in line? Oh. You could do that. Um, yeah, so uh, it's just, if one X, we have one XBB here, one ATP. If you want them in line, um, you can do that. Uh, you can just use, if you want to superimpose them, you can superimpose them using display, but if you want them separated, uh, then you would need to, uh, what we just, we call connect to them. So you right click and you choose the option move, rotate separately. So it becomes yellow and then you can just move using the middle mouse button you can move that separately so you have the two displayed like that. There's also um, options for um, multiple windows so um, you can have uh, a little window here of your structure or you can have um, there's lots of different options, so you can you have uh, change what's displayed here compared to here, um, uh, and other things. So it's uh, different options here. A question about um, the construct uh, uh, sequence. Yeah, so we're going to have a. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to close this. Yeah, uh, about the sequence level. So I think um, three weeks time there's a or four weeks time there's a, a webinar on bioinformatics. But um, if you want to see the uh, construct, or so the protein structure doesn't represent the whole protein. So you may want to um, see which parts of the sequence are missing. So in this example, you can see that in the between the alpha C here and, and the glycine rich loop, uh, or beta three, I think this is. Uh, there's four residues missing by these things, so you could, you won't want to see that on the on the on the sequence level, which we will cover uh, in a few weeks' time. Uh, but you can read the full sequence, full uniprot sequence, and see which parts are missing from the protein structure. Uh, or you can read the alignment, which is what I wanted to do. Um, extract construct, and so this will give you the alignment at the bottom here. So a large portion of this structure is not been solved. You can see there's no, this is the Uniprot code, this is the PDB code. If we drag down here, we can see the part of the protein that has been, that we had the crystal structure for, and we can see that this, this region here um, is missing. And um, so this is fully linked, so you can see, we'll, we'll cover this in a few weeks' time, but um, this, this alignment is fully linked to the structure, so you can zoom in or you can color by the alignment things like that but that's another webinar <laughs> completely um, I had a question about um, 
the protein folding uh, that's that's uh, you, yes you can you can do you can sample proteins and peptides uh, I'd have to send you a, a different link that's kind of out of the scope of this webinar um, that's in the ICM Pro uh, software had a question about how to display and delete water delete waters yes yeah, so the water molecules are not displayed by default but they are here in the ICM workspace so if you single click that displays them uh, you can change the representation of them for example like this um, and if there's a particular water that you want to keep in the in the in the, in the image uh, you could uh, select that water molecule and you can see it's selected here and um, so we know it's water 33 number 33 so we can undisplay all those waters and go back down to water number 33 uh, <laughs> and then display that individually rather than display all of them there's a key water in the pocket that's making that is important and you may want to display <laughs>